this job is psychology as well. I'm a big, big fan of behavioral economics. And, and the reason people are so scared to invest is you are, you feel the pain of losing a dollar three times more than you enjoy making a dollar. So if I make, if you make $1, you're happy. If you lose $1, you are depressed. Um, so a lot of that goes into just the behavioral side of things of keeping people in check. So Ben, I have a question. Um, yeah. so, so I've been investing in 401k again, since I was old enough to do so. Um, and now I've got my kids doing the same thing and they're young adults, 26 and 27. Um, I'm bringing my daughter to start investing in other means. What, and, and again, you, because you don't know the situation, you might not even know how to answer this, but is there a minimum that, that might be good for someone just first starting out investing outside of a 401k? I mean, I know that I've heard like, yeah, 10% of your income, pay yourself 10% of your income, but this, this would be outside of, of that. Is there some kind of minimum that she would need to invest in the stock market? In today's day and age, not really. There's apps like Acorns that will take change off your credit card and invest it into an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Robinhood, I don't believe, has any minimum. Firms like ours tend to have some types of minimums, but for a young adult getting started and investing, no, there's... Um, there's really not a minimum. What I would suggest is one, if she's going to use that to buy a house someday or invest in retirement, there's different vehicles she could look at. Um, outside of her 401k, a Roth IRA is a separate retirement account that grows tax deferred and is taken out tax free after the age 59 and a half. So all of the earnings she makes in that account, she would never have to pay taxes on if she meets two criteria. She has it for five years and doesn't touch it until she's 59 and a half. Otherwise, in just a regular brokerage account, things like Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, they have no minimum zero fee trading. I encourage you all to really, what I'm advocating here is for becoming financially literate, being uh, the mindset that you want to explore, to experiment a little bit, get educated, sit down with somebody like Ben and talk to that person about what you want and really actually like make your goals serious. As he's talking about, it'll work best for you if you have a goal in mind. And sometimes that goal that you have at 60 can become a goal that you reach at 30. Um, but it takes some planning, you know, because it become of that mindset that it's the who, not how. So it's not always a question of how am I going to do it, but who is going to help me? Who's going to help me get there? Who's going to help me get those options? It's very rewarding to to help people reach their goals when you can tell someone they're ready to retire, when you can say that you've paid for your daughter's education. It's extremely rewarding to help people achieve what they've worked so hard to achieve and just put them in the right direction. And I wanted to add one more thing to Katie for your daughter's situation about investing and, and getting started. What I would say is, is start with something that's manageable um, and start, you can always increase your investment, but can it, it can put a bad taste in your mouth if you do a large investment and all of a sudden you need to replace something on your car and you have to pull it out and the market unexpectedly fell and now you're down on your investment and you've put more in than you got. So you can always increase it over time, but start manageable, start small and increase it from there. You talked about employee matches. If you work for somebody, right, and they offer you a program, what should you do about that? When you're getting started with investing and, and you start with an employer that offers some type of employer employee contribution plan, whether it's a 401k, a 403b, a 457, a simple IRA, first place you want to start saving is at least achieve your employer's match. If they offer a 3%, 3% match, put aside 3% because you're losing out on free money. You're losing out on an equal dollar for dollar contribution to your future. Um, and I, you may think, oh, I can't afford 5% of my paycheck. Well, they're giving you an additional 5%. They're doubling your money almost instantly. So when you're talking about starting for retirement and that long-term savings goal, at least get the money that's on the table. We were, we're talking a lot about investment, right? And we talked about decision paralysis last week. We we're talking a lot about Jim Quick and his book, um, 
limitless. And I thought this, I want to kind of follow up on some things from that if I could. And you guys feel free to jump in with any comments, thoughts, ideas. You know, this is the trading club, so trade, <laughs> trade some ideas here. So Jim Quick talks about a guy named Edward De Bono, okay? And he developed a tool called the Six Thinking Hats to help you look at a problem from six different perspectives. All right? I'm using Edward De Bono at work right now. That's crazy. Is that right? Who is that? Who, I, Ed De Bono, the, the Six Thinking Hats. We're using oh, that. No. Right. Yeah, who's talking? Sorry. Katie, sorry. <laughs> How are you using it at work? Can you share? Um, just uh, so f from my role as a business analyst, I work with a bunch of people, right? That from all different aspects of the business, and to put on each one of these different hats, we're, depending on number one where you are in the project, number two who you're discussing certain portions of it with. So this is fantastic. Cool. Yeah, I mean that's awesome. I mean, and feel free to help help explain this uh, because it was a concept that was new to me this week as I was reading about it. And um, what I'd actually like to do is get uh, like a ball cap, like <laughs> each one of these. And as I go through the process of analyzing things, right? So, you know, you kind of have to visualize yourself putting on a hat. And so there's these different colored hats. You got white, red, black, yellow, green, and blue. Um, the white hat, and I've written in the description here is logic. I shouldn't say I did. Um, our wonderful uh, creative artist, uh, Eat Well with L, uh, put this together for me. So the white hat um, is the hat of logic. And uh, I'm just going to read from, from what I'm reading. It says, when you wear the white hat, ask yourself, what is the information available? What are the facts? How can I look at this objectively? And to help remember that in the process, because you're not always going to have these hats lined up as you tackle an issue, right? You want to think of the white hat as like a scientist in a white coat, kind of gathering the facts and figuring out what's there. The red hat is about emotion. So when you're uh, coming up to a problem or a puzzle, as it might be a better way to say it, you want to ask yourself, how do I feel about this? What emotions am I feeling about this? Um, what is my intuition telling me? intuition steve jobs is huge on intuition steve jobs says your intuition always somehow knows where you're supposed to go all right um when you think of the red hat you want to imagine a fire right because emotional fire that you have okay the black hat put yourself put a black hat on for a minute that's the critic okay and when you wear the black hat you ask what could go wrong why won't this work why do i need to be cautious so those are all the objections that come up, right? Like, so Ben, for like investing money, right? The, oh my God, I'm going to lose a dollar. I'm going to lose all my money on this, right? It's okay to think that way. You should be. To remember the black hat, they say, think about the black robe of a judge. All right, the yellow hat's about optimism. So when you have a puzzle to solve, ask yourself, what could go right? What are the benefits? What's the upside? Okay, for me, when I have that going on in my head, I, I'd say there's a lot going on for me between the yellow and the black hat. It's the yellow gets me initially, it gets me into then, you know, like what could go right, then I get emotionally excited about it. Then somehow that black hat comes in, it's like, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna work. That's the resistance. So for me, I, I think I need to spend a little more time on optimism. Sometimes we actually fear being successful. We know what the benefits are, what the upside is, right, Ben? How many times do you tell people, put your money in now continuously and you'll be fine? And then they don't do anything. They're almost afraid that it won't work and they, they tend to go to the critic. So the yellow hat, imagine the sun. Uh, the green hat is the creativity. When you wear that hat, ask, how can I be creative? What are the possibilities? Is there a different alternative I'm not considering? Katie, I think you were asking some of those questions, right? Does it just have to be this one money investment vehicle or could it be several? Um, the green hat is... Imagine green grass coming up. So get creative. How can I have a relationship with money? How can I make money? How can my children make money? And, uh, and come back to this whole making money thing in a second. Blue hat is about the manager. When you wear the blue hat, listen to the other hats, zoom out, okay, put that blue hat on, zoom out, think about the big picture, and then make your final decision. The blue hat, think about a blue sky or a blue ocean, okay? That's like, you know, when you just zoom out and, and you really think about it. Gotta love it. Okay, guys, that's the Meaningful Ideas Trading Club for this week, August 12, 2021. Ben, thank you so much for being here and anyone else watching live on Facebook today. Um, and for all you folks that came into the room and contributed, um, 
and we'll see you next week.